Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered in fellowship on the 30th of the eighth month on our Creator's calendar, which is the 13th of November on the Gregorian calendar for 2021. And we're taking a little segue from the recognitions of Clement, which is the preaching and teaching of Shimon Kepha, Simon Peter, as they call him colloquially in English. Sorry about that. Um, we're, we're taking a break from that real quick, and we're going to be covering a few different things. But this right here in particular is Yahu or Jeremiah 23. And it's about Yahuwah's contention with the shepherds over his people who are making them forget his name for Baal or the Lord, which is what that means. All right, we'll just read it here. It says, woe to the shepherds, destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares Yahuwah. Therefore, thus said Yahuwah Elohim of Yisrael against the shepherds who feed at my people. And it's Aleph Tau's people. That's actually in the Hebrew. So I won't point all those out every time, but I, th I believe I've mentioned it in this particular chapter. Every time it's mentioned, I put it in there. You have scattered my flock, driven them away, and have not tended them. See, I am punishing you for the evil of your deeds, declares Yahuwah. Therefore, I shall gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and shall bring them back to their fold, and they shall bear an increase, and I shall raise up shepherds over them, and they shall feed them. And they shall fear no more, nor be discouraged, nor shall they be lacking, declares Yahuwah. See, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when I shall raise for beloved, or Dawid, a branch of righteousness, and a sovereign shall reign and act prudently. That word is maskil or shekel, which is intelligently. I didn't have it translated right here. And shall do right ruling and righteousness in the earth. In his days, Yahuda, which means those who praise, confess, and acknowledge Yahuwah, shall be delivered, and Yisrael, the upright of El, or those who strive with man and Elohim and overcome, or the prince of El, it all has that meaning, dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called Yahuwah Zadikanu, which is Yahuwah our righteousness. Therefore, see, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when they shall no more say, I'm sorry, when they shall say no more, as Yahuwah lives, who brought up the children of Yisrael out of the land of Mitzrayim. But as Yahuwah lives, who brought up and led the seed of the house of Yisrael, out of the land of the north, and from all the lands where I had driven them, and they shall dwell on their own soil. My heart within me is broken because of the foretellers. All my bones shake. I am like a drunken man, and like a man overcome by wine. Now, just for context here, these foretellers are what we'd call Gnostics when the, when the emissaries came. It was the errant heretical beliefs that were brought in by these people presuming to be teachers of men when they didn't have the truth. And as it says elsewhere in scripture, it's only gotten worse as time's gone on until now we're living in the times where the love of many is waxed cold because of the increase in lawlessness or not doing his will. This is, I'm like a drunken man. And like a man overcome by wine, because of Yahuwah and because of his set-apart words, for the land is filled with adulterers, for the land mourns because of a curse. The pastures of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their might is not right. And if you remember, it's not by might or, or by our, it's not by our sword or by our arms that we gain the victory, but it's by his ruach. However, our country's been turned into a, 
a land of aggression there. For both foreteller and Cohen have become defiled. Even in my house, I have found their evil, declares Yahuwah. Therefore, their way is to them like slippery ways in the dark. They are driven on, and they shall fall in them. For I bring evil on them, the year of their punishment, declares Yahuwah. And I have seen folly in the foretellers of Sham Shamaron, or Samaria. They foretold by Baal, the Lord, and led my people Yisrael astray. And among the foretellers of Yerushalayim, I have seen a horrible matter, committing adultery and walking in falsehood. And they strengthen the hands of evil ones, so that no one turns back from his evil. All of them are like Sodom to me, and their inhabitants like Gomorrah. Therefore, thus said Yahuwah, Sorry, therefore, thus said Yahuwah Zabaoth, or Yahuwah of hosts or armies, concerning the foretellers. See, I am making them eat wormwood and shall make them drink poisoned water. For defilement has gone out into all the land from the foretellers of Yarushalayim. Thus said Yahuwah Zabaoth, do not listen to the words of the foretellers who foretold to you. They lead you astray. They speak a vision of their own heart, not from the mouth of Yahuwah. They keep on saying to those who despise me, Yahuwah has said you shall have shalom. And to all who walk according to their stubbornness of their own heart, they say no evil comes upon you. For who has stood in the council of Yahuwah and has seen and heard his word? Who has listened to his word and obeyed it? See, a storm of Yahuwah shall go forth in a rage, a whirling storm. It whirls on the head of the wrong. The displeasure of Yahuwah shall not turn back until he has done and established the purposes of his heart. In the latter days, you shall comprehend it perfectly. I did not send these foretellers, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them. Yet they foretold. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have let my people hear my words, and they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their deeds, which is the whole purpose. His word convicts us of sin, so that with a contrite heart we can turn from the things we do that displeases him. But if we pervert the words, if we twist them, if we don't translate it right, if we don't accurately convey them it can leave wrong ideas and this is the whole issue that he has a problem with right here am i an elohim close by declares yahuwah and not an elohim afar off if anyone is hidden in secret places would i not see him declares yahuwah do i not feel the shamayim and earth declares yahuwah i have heard what the foretellers have said who foretold or who foretell falsehood in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Tell when shall it be in the heart of the foretellers, the foretellers of falsehood and foretellers of the deceit of their own heart, who try to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which everyone relates to his neighbor, as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. The foreteller who has a dream, let him relate the dream. And he who has my word, let him speak my word in truth. What is the chaff to the wheat, declares Yahuwah. Is not my word like a fire, declares Yahuwah, and like a hammer that shatters a rock? Therefore, see, I am against the foretellers, declares Yahuwah, who steal my words, every one from his neighbor. See, I am against the foretellers, declares Yahuwah who use their tongues and say he declares. Sir, where are we? Like what section of scripture? See, I am against those who foretell false dreams, declare Yahuwah, and relate them and lead my people astray by their falsehoods and by their reckless boasting. But I myself did not send them, nor have I commanded them. 
and they do not profit this people at all, declares Yahuwah. And when these people, or the foreteller, or the Kohen, ask you, saying, what is the message of Yahuwah? Then you sh shall say to them, what message? I shall forsake you, declares Yahuwah. As for the foreteller, and the Kohen, and the people who say the message of Yahuwah, I shall punish that man, or and his house. Sorry. This is what each one says to eth his neighbor, and each one to eth his brother. What has Yahuwah answered? And what has Yahuwah spoken? Yet the message of Yahuwah you no longer remember. Which means his word that he's given us already. For every man's message is his own word. For you have changed the words of the living El, Yahuwah Zavaoth, our Elohim. This is what you say to the foreteller. What has Yahuwah answered you? And what has Yahuwah spoken? But since you say the message of Yahuwah, therefore thus said Yahuwah, Because you say this word, the message of Yahuwah, and I have not sent to you, or sorry, and I have sent to you saying, do not say the message of Yahuwah. Therefore, see, I, I shall utterly forget you and cast you away from my presence along with the city that I gave you and your fathers. And I shall put an everlasting reproach on you and an everlasting shame that is not forgotten. Now, if you remember, I think we'd covered that last week too, or a little bit, where we're not supposed to think beyond what is written. We are to take the words that he gave to his taught ones, that, he tr that they trustworthily gave to their taught ones, and then they, that they taught the people. And it's in that order, but you're not supposed to add to or take from. We're not supposed to think beyond what is written or to put your own spin on things, but like a child to their father to come to the truth and, and listen plainly for the sense of it from his words alone. This seems to go along with that part too. It's, it, it's um, from a different section. This is Yeshayahu or Isaiah, which is the deliverances of Yahuwah, right? Or Yahuwah delivers. It's our Mashiach's name in a different form. Chapter 30, and this is the entirety of it. It says, Woe to the stubborn children, declares Yahuwah. And remember, stubbornness is as witchcraft and idolatry. To make counsel, but not from me, and to devise plans, but not of my Ruach, in order to add sin to sin. And if you remember, the Ruach leads us into all truth, and the Torah, or the word, which is our Mashiach, is the truth. So it's the same thing saying it again. Who are setting out to go down to Mitzrayim and have not asked my mouth to be strengthened in the strength of Pharaoh and to seek refuge in the shadow of Mitzrayim. And the strength of Pharaoh shall become your shame and the refuge of the shadow of Mitzrayim your confusion. For the princes were at Zoan and his messengers came to Chenes or to, yeah, Chenes. They were all ashamed of a people who did not profit them, not for help or profit, but a shame and also a reproach. The message concerning the beasts of the south, through a land of trouble and distress, from which came the lioness and lion, the adder and fiery flying serpent. They convey their riches on the backs of young donkeys, and their treasures on the humps of camels, to an unprofitable tribe, even Mitzrayim, whose help is vain and empty. Therefore I have called her Rechab Chem Shebeth, and go write it before them on a tablet, and inscribe it on a scroll, that it is for a latter day, a witness forever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children who refuse to hear the Torah of Yahuwah, 
who say to the seers, do not see, and to the foretellers, do not foretell to us what is right. Speak to us what is smooth, foretell deceits. Turn aside from the way, swerve from the path, cause the Kodesh Yisrael to cease from before us. And usually it will say the Kadosh one of Yisrael. But if you look in the Hebrew, the one of isn't in existence there. And it's the, just the Kadosh Yisrael. The context there is speaking. This is a title for our Mashiach, just like Melchizedek. He is the only sinless one. We are his body. He's the head. But he was the pinnacle of the example. He was the true Yisrael. And he is the Kadosh Yisrael. So if you take that and everywhere in the foretellers where it says that, it's still speaking of him in the context they say set apart one of, but those words are added. They just do it for context so that we get the idea of who it's speaking of. But just one moment. All right, before we go on, I, I wanted to look up the name, this Rehab Chem Shabbat. It in the Hallelujah Scriptures name meanings book, just for a quick reference to it, it, they say it means proud and wealthy at rest. So this was the name that he called his people when he was rebuking them for being rebellious, lying children who refuse to do the Torah or listen to his servants that he sends it to them. All right, and then we'll continue where we left off. Therefore, thus said the set-apart Yisrael, because you despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and rely on them, therefore this crookedness or inequity is to you like a breach ready to fall, a bulge in a high wall whose breaking comes suddenly, swiftly, and he shall break it like the breaking of a potter's vessel, which is broken in pieces without sparing so that there is not found among its fragments a shard to take fire from the hearth or to take water from a cistern. For thus said the master Yahuwah, set apart Yisrael, in returning and rest you are delivered, in stillness and trust is your strength, yet you would not. And you said no, for we flee upon horses, therefore you flee. And we ride on swift horses. Therefore, those who pursue you are swift. One thousand flee at the rebuke of one. At the rebuke of five, you shall flee until you are left as a pole on the top of a mountain and as a sign on a hill. And therefore, Yahuwah shall wait to show you favor. And therefore, he shall be exalted to have compassion on you. So because we are rebellious and refuse to listen, we're under the curse. We're following after things. Our enemies will overtake us and, and have their victory until we repent. And then he's going to show his favor because he will be exalted and lifted up, which is exactly what he said. Our Mashiach said, and I, and if I be lifted up, I shall draw all men unto myself. For Yahuwah is an L of right ruling. Ashrei, or prosperous, happy, confirmed, authenticated, strengthened, walking straight, is he or those are all those who wait for him. That's all the meanings of the word Ashrei, and I'm sorry, it's on the wrong spot there. It says, for the people shall dwell in Zion at Yarushalayim. You shall weep no more. He shall show much favor to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears, he shall answer you. Though Yahuwah gave you bread of adversity and water of affliction, your teacher shall no longer be hidden, but your eyes shall see your teacher, and your ears hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right, or whenever you turn to the left, and you shall defile the covering of your graven images of silver, and the plating of your molded images of gold. You shall throw them away as a menstrual cloth and say to them, be gone. And 
the illusion here would be Rachel, Rachel, and the household idols that she was hiding, right? And he shall give you rain for your seed with which you sow the ground and bread of the increase of the earth. And it shall be fat and rich, your cattle grazing in an enlarged pasture in that yom. And the oxen and the young donkeys that work the ground eat seasoned fodder, winnowed with shovel and fan. And on every high mountain and on every high hill, there shall be rivers and streams of water in the yom of great slaughter. When the towers fall or when the migdalim, when the great matters fall. And the light of the moon shall be as the light of the servant or sun, which is seven times brighter, right? And the light of the servant be sevenfold as the light of seven yamim or days in the yam that Yahuwah binds up the breach of his people and heals the wound of his blows. See, the name of Yahuwah is coming from afar, burning with his wrath. Yahuwah means he who causes it to be. He who exists, right? But see, the name of Yahuwah is coming from afar, burning with his wrath and heavy smoke. His lips shall be filled with rage, and his tongue be as a devouring fire. And his breath shall be as an overflowing stream, which reaches up to the neck to sift the nations with a sieve of falsehood and a misleading bridle on the jaws of the people. Let the song be to you as in a night set apart for a festival, and gladness of heart is he who is going with the flute to come into the mountain of Yahuwah, to the rock of Yisrael. And Yahuwah shall cause his excellent voice to be heard and show the coming down of his arm with raging wrath and flame of a consuming fire with scattering downpour and hailstones. And this is alluding to like when Yahushua brought them into the land and when they were fighting against their enemies, when they had the hailstones and fire coming down. Also allusion to what happened with Sodom and Gomorrah. For through the voice of Yahuwah, Asher is broken down. With a rod he smites, and every passage of the ordained staff Yahuwah lays on him shall be with tambourines and leers, when he shall fight with it, battling with a brandishing arm. For Topheth was ordained of old, even for the sovereign it has been prepared. He has made it deep and large. It's fire pit with much wood, the breath of Yahuwah as a steam or as a stream of burning sulfur is burning in it. And this is Yeshayahu, same foreteller, but three chapters later. Real quick, is there any comments or questions before we go on? I'll pause it for a moment. Woe to you, ravager! while you have not been ravaged, and you treacherous while they have not betrayed you. When you have ceased ravaging, you shall be ravaged, and when you stop betraying, they shall betray you. And this is an example you can see throughout history, too. I don't want to detract too much from the reading, but over and over again in antiquity through history as his people, after they were given these words of life, failed to guard him. And they mistreated one another. These very words came upon them. The Angles, the Saxons, the Germans, the Vikings, the Welsh, the original Britons. The, they're all the Celts and the Germans are all related. So when you have these peoples going in and pillaging others and doing evil to one another, it's literally in fulfillment of the curses. And it's what you see in the time of judges where they're fighting amongst, amongst themselves, but also right here. And then when they stopped ravaging, then they themselves got ravaged by another. And that's a, a thing that you'll see over and over again, not just amongst the children, but also with nations at large. You can get that from, it, from Assyria, from Babylon, and the like. Eventually, that will also happen with Rome. Rome. 
But it says, Yahuwah, show, show us favor, for we have waited for you. Be their arm every dawn, our deliverance also in time of distress. At the noise of the rumbling of the people shall flee. When you lift yourself up, the nations shall be scattered, and your plunder shall be gathered like the gatherings of a caterpillar. As locusts rush about, they rush upon them. Yahuwah is exalted, for he dwells on high. He has filled Zion with right ruling and righteousness, and he shall be the trustworthiness of your times, a wealth of deliverance, chokmah, and knowledge. The fear of Yahuwah, that is his treasure. And the fear of Yahuwah comes by obedience to him. All right. It's the beginning of Chokmah, and all those doing them have great comprehension. And then again, it says in the book of Acts that he gives of his Ruach, which leads us into all truth to the ones who obey him. But it says, see, their brave ones shall cry outside. The messengers of Shalom weep bitterly. The highway shall be deserted. The way traveling man shall have ceased. He has broken the covenant. He has despised the cities. He respected no man. Now, I never really got a significance of this before. But now that I'm learning about the law, the common law, the law of the land, and then the law of the cities or what came about from Babylon, it, it makes a lot more context there. It's easier for Rome's municipal laws and statutes to be enforced when men are congregated together, and they have all these rules for how the government works. If you're familiar with the way coercion and, and going along with the crowd to get along works with people, the sheep follow. It's just the way they are. Um, there's a very... There's a very good video on the topic. It's called Mesmerized by Little Light Studios. I highly recommend that. I'll, I'll go ahead and share it in the link or in the, the video when we make it. <laughs> this says, he has despised the cities. He respected no man. The earth shall mourn in languish. Lebanon shall be ashamed. Sharon shall be withered like a desert. And Bashan and Carmel be, be shaking. Now I rise up, declares Yahuwah. Now I am exalted. Now I am lifted up. You conceive chaff. You bring forth stubble. Your spirit or ruach devours you like fire. And people shall be like the burnings of lime. Like thorns cut up, they are burned in the fire. You who are afar off, hear what I shall do. And you who are near, know my might. Sinners in Zion shall be afraid. Trembling shall grip the defiled ones. Who of us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who of us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He who walks righteously and speaks what is straight. He who rejects the gain of oppressors, or gain of oppressions, rather. Who keeps his hands from accepting bribes. Who stops his ears from hearing of bloodshed and shuts his eyes from seeing evil. He shall inhabit the heights. Strongholds of rocks be his refuge. His bread shall be given him. His water be steadfast. Your eyes shall see the sovereign in his comeliness. See a land that is far off. And if you're paying attention here, these are conditions that we can meet or we can fail to meet. But if we do these things, then he will make himself known to us. And uh, another witness to this is in the recognitions of Clement, we'll be reading, but it's further along in the book where he plainly tells them that Yahushua Mashiach is in the minds of all men. He's present with everyone, but to the unbelieving, he doesn't seem to be there and he's dormant. However, for those, he, he is also a, the true foreteller. And for, them, for those whom he can tell have a heart prepared for him, because he knows the minds and hearts of all men, he makes himself known to them. 
This is your eye shall see the sovereign in his comeliness, see a land that is far off. Your heart ponders fear. Where is the scribe? Where is he who weighs? Where is he who counts the greatness? Or that's the uh, recounting the Migdalim, the, the counting the towers, as it's commonly translated. No longer shall you see a fierce people, a people of too deep a lip to hear, of a jabbering tongue no one comprehends. See Zion, the city of our appointed time. Your eyes shall see Yerushalayim, an undisturbed home, a tent not taken down. Its stakes are never removed, nor any of its cords broken. This is speaking of the Shemaim Yerushalayim, the one that's built in the palm of his hands, the place of which our Mashiach said, in my father's house are many staying places, right? This is, but there great is Yahuwah for us, a place of broad rivers, streams in which no boat with oars sails, nor big ships pass by. For Yahuwah is our refuge. Yahuwah is our lawgiver. Yahuwah is our sovereign. And this right here, this verse is what our founders used to establish a three-tiered government with checks and balances. Because Yahuwah alone fits the office of all three, but men are desperately wicked. The heart of man is desperately wicked above all else, and who shall know it? They knew the frailty of men and his sovereignty, so they separated these and they kept checks and balances for that very reason. But this is the verse they get it from. It says, for Yahuwah is our judge. Yahuwah is our lawgiver. Yahuwah is our sovereign. He delivers us. Your rope shall be slack. They do not strengthen their mast. They shall not spread the sail. Then the prey of great plunder shall be divided. The lame shall take the prey. Neither shall the inhabitants say, I am sick. The people who dwell in it is forgiven their inequity or crookedness. All right, continuing on, this is Second Kepha, chapter 3. It says, this is now, beloved ones, the second letter I write to you, in which I stir up your sincere mind to remember the words previously spoken by the set-apart foretellers and of the command of the master and deliverer by your emissaries. Knowing this first, the mockers shall come in the last days with mocking, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all continues as from the beginning of creation. For they choose to have this hidden from them, that the Shamayim were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water by the word of Elohim, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. And the present Shemaim and the earth are treasured up by the same word, being kept for fire, to a yom or day of judgment and destruction of wicked men. And yet, beloved ones, let not this one be hidden from you, that with Yahuwah one yom is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Yahuwah is not slow in regard to the promise, as some count slowness but is patient toward us, not desiring that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the Yom of Yahuwah shall come as a thief in the night, in which the Shamayim shall pass away with a great noise, and the element shall melt with intense heat, and the earth and the works that are in it shall be burned up. Seeing all these are to be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be in set-apart behavior and fear, looking for and hastening the coming of the Yom of Elohim, through which the Shemaim shall be destroyed, being set on fire, and the elements melt with intense heat? But according to his promise, we wait for a renewed Shemaim and a renewed earth in which righteousness dwells. So then, beloved ones, looking forward to this, do your utmost to be found by him in shalom, spotless and blameless, 
and reckon the patience of our Yahuwah as deliverance, as also our beloved Shaul wrote to you according to the hokma given to him, as also in all letters. Now, most translations will have his in between there. Some of them will have the decency to put that in italics because it's actually added. I never use that because it's not the truth. They say, as also in all letters, speaking in them concerning these, which is true. It's not just Shaul's letters that people twist and pervert. It's all of them. So I try to point that out every time I read it. This is, as also in all letters, speaking in them concerning these, in which some are hard to comprehend, which those who are untaught and unstable twist to their own destruction, as they do also the other scriptures. You then, beloved ones, being forewarned, watch lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away with the delusion of the lawless, but grow in the favor and knowledge of our Yahuwah and Deliverer, Yahushua Mashiach. To him be the esteem both now and to the day that abides. Amen. All right, so thank you for that. And that whole section was really on... Uh, and there could have been a lot more, obviously, but on the importance of listening to him and not trusting in anyone who adds to or takes away and walks in the wrong character. That's essentially what his big issue is. Disobedience to his will and listening to those that are not speaking right and also acting incorrectly. So thank you for that. And if you give me just a moment, we'll find the next section we're going to read. All right, now this is a little bit of a segue. It was a separate question that another brother we were, we're online with right now had, where he had just learned about the festivals in the Dead Sea Scrolls about new wine, new oil, and new wood, and he was like, he would like more information. So this is where they come from, and we're just going to read how it was observed at the times where they were keeping these instructions. This is... This is from the Temple Scroll, and it's from the 11QT series. I don't have all the nomenclature on the top of my head, but we'll put it all in the notes if anyone wants to find this for themselves. All right. It says, you shall count seven weeks from the day when you bring the new grain offering to Yahuwah, the bread of first fruits. And this is the two loaves of wheat bread on Shavuot, right? Seven full Sabbaths shall elapse until you have counted 50 days to the morrow of the seventh Sabbath, meaning the first Yom of the week. Every one of these is on that the same way. You shall bring new wine for a drink offering for hens from all the tribes of Israel. One hen or one third of a hen for each tribe. They shall offer on this Yom or day. With the wine, 12 rams to Yahuwah, all the chiefs of the clans of Israel. Rams, it, it, whenever you see this, it breaks off, so you're missing some texts. Okay, Rams and the corresponding grain offering, according to the statute, two-tenths of fine flour mixed with oil, one-third of a hen of oil for a ram with this drink offering, seven yearling rams, lambs, and a he goat, and then Lispus, it breaks off. And assembly Lispus it breaks off. Their grain offering and their drink offering shall be according to the statute concerning young bulls and the ram. Just so you can get the context, they're getting the literal instructions for what animals are offered during this time. They're also given the exact measurements for the amount of oil, for the grain, and for all the different portions, including the frankincense and the wood that they used on the altars when they're giving this. Everything according to measure and exact. This is bulls and rams lispus, which is when you have a break in the text with those three dots, right? To Yahuwah. At the quarter of the day meaning the third hour, they shall offer Lispus, the rams and their drink offering. They shall offer 14 yearling ram lambs, breaks off the burnt offering. They shall prepare them, it breaks off. 
and they shall burn their fat on the altar. The fat covering, the entrails and the fat that is on them, and the appendage of the liver with the kidneys he shall remove, and the fat on them. I don't want to detract too much here, but all these things are where toxins build up the most too, and it's not supposed to be eaten, it's offered. But moving on, it says, And that which is on the loins and the fat tail close to the backbone, they shall burn all on the altar together with the corresponding grain offering and drink offering, an offering by fire of soothing odor before Yahuwah. They shall offer every grain offering joined to a drink offering according to the statute. They shall take a handful from every grain offering offered either with frankincense or dry, its memorial portion, and burn it on the altar. They shall eat the remainder in the inner courtyard. The Kohanim shall eat it unleavened. It shall not be eaten with leaven. It shall be eaten on that day before sunset. They shall salt all their offerings. You shall never allow the covenant of salt to fail. They shall offer to Yahuwah an offering from the rams and the lambs the right thigh, the breast, the cheeks, the right thigh from Yaakov when he wrestled with him and he caused it to, the, the socket to be out of joint, right? The breast, the cheeks, the stomach, and the foreleg as far as the shoulder bone. And they shall wave them as a wave offering. The Kohanim's portion shall be the thigh of the offering and the breast, the forelegs, the cheeks, and the stomachs as an eternal rule from the children of Israel, and the shoulder remaining of the foreleg shall be for the Luiim or the Levites, Lispis, an eternal rule for them and for their seed, Lispis, the princes of the thousands. That would be the princes of the Alphim, right? But in modern terms, if you remember in scripture, you have them broken up. It, the men are broken into groups of tens, fifties, hundreds, and thousands. And in antiquity, the leaders over thousands became known by our people as the Shire Reeves. And we call them sheriffs today. So we still carry this very common law principle down. It continues, says, from the rams and from the lambs, one ram and one ram lamb shall belong to the Kohanim, to the Luiim. One ram, one lamb, and to every tribe, one ram, one lamb for all the tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel. They shall eat them on that day in the outer courtyard before Yahuwah. Then you see it breaks off again. So this is the Kohanim shall drink their first and the Luiim second. This is talking about the wine offering. All right. The princes of the standards first, men of renown. After them, the whole people from the great to the small shall begin to drink the new wine. They shall not eat any unripe grapes from the vines. For on this day, they shall expiate or expiate for their tirosh. The now, you're not supposed to eat the grapes before this day. You, before the offering of the new wine, you're not supposed to eat the grapes of the field, just like you don't eat the barley before you offer the barley. You don't eat the wheat before you offer the wheat. And on this one, it's before you offer the wine, which this would be wine that you made from the year previous. It would be ready today, but the grape on the vine would be ready this day as well. And it's after that time that you'd offer it and then you'd be able to consume it yourself. This is the children of Israel shall rejoice before Yahuwah in eternal rule for their generations, wherever they dwell. They shall rejoice on this day for they have begun to pour out an intoxicating drink offering, the new wine on the altar of Yahuwah year by year. You shall count from that day seven weeks, seven times seven days, 49 days. There shall be seven full Sabbaths until the morrow of the seventh Sabbath, 
which is the first day of the week. You shall count 50 days, or yamim. You shall then offer new oil from the homes of the tribes of the children of Israel, half a hin from a tribe, new beaten oil, lispis, oil on the altar of the Holocaust, first fruits before Yahuwah, lispis. And it says it shall expiate, or expiate with it for all the congregation before Yahuwah, lispis, with this oil, half a hin, lispis. And I'm sorry, see, a lot of this stuff is from the scrolls and they're old parchments that are broken up and missing pieces. So you have sections that might be missing, but you can get the intent. This is when they would celebrate. They'd bring in their first fruits for that year of their, their offerings. They would give their portion to the Kohen. They would do their offerings specifically. The people would re rejoice before Yahuwah and then be able to use the goods at their house from that point on for the year. If you didn't, if you didn't grow grapes or have a vineyard like that, you didn't, it didn't apply to you. Same thing with wheat or other things. It just depended on what you did. If you had multiple, then you'd have multiple times in the year you'd be going up to celebrate this stuff. For one moment, please. All right. All right. So just to finish reading right here, I apologize for all the parts where it breaks off. I'll just say lispis so that you know that it's missing text and we'll, we'll read through it. <clears throat> right here, it says he shall expiate or expedite i'm not saying that right sorry with it for all the congregation before yahuwah lispus with this oil half a hin lispus according to the statute a holocaust an offering by fire of soothing odor to yahuwah lispus with this oil they shall light the lamps lispus the princes of the thousands with lispus 14 yearling male lambs and the corresponding grain and drink offering. So it was the requirement of the leaders to provide the offerings and whether they got them of themselves or from the people. I think the people who had the offerings would give them, they'd stack it up and it would be brought by the leaders themselves or the chiefs of each tribe would bring offerings on occasion we see in the scriptures, right? This, this could be just giving the directions for how it's supposed to be handled and the way it's supposed to be brought to the Kohenim. This is for the lambs and the rams. The Levites, or Luiim, shall slaughter Lispus, and the Kohenim, the sons of Aaron, shall sprinkle their blood on the altar all around Lispus, and they shall burn their fat on the altar of the Holocaust. Lispus. And the corresponding grain offering and drink offering, they shall burn over the fats, lispus, an offering made by fire, a soothing odor to Yahuwah. They shall take away from lispus, the right thigh and the breast, lispus, the cheeks and the stomach shall be the Kohanim's portion according to the statute concerning them. They shall give to the Luiim the shoulder, Afterwards, they shall bring them out to the children of Israel, and the children of Israel shall give to the Kohanim one ram, one lamb, and to the Luiim one ram, one lamb, and to each tribe one ram, one lamb. They shall eat them on that day in the outer courtyard before Yahuwah an eternal rule for their generations year by year. Afterwards, they shall eat from the olives and anoint themselves with the new oil. For on this day, they shall expiate or expedite for all the oil of the land before Yahuwah once yearly. They shall rejoice, Lispus. <clears throat> this is the high Kohen, shall offer the holocaust of the Luiim first, and afterwards shall send up in smoke the holocaust of the tribe of Yahuda. And when he is sending it up in smoke, they shall slaughter before him the he-goat first, and the, he shall lift up its blood in a bull to the altar, 
and with his finger he shall put some of the blood to the four horns of the altar of the holocaust and to the four corners of the altar ledge and shall toss the blood towards the base of the altar ledge all around. He shall burn its fat on the altar, the fat covering the entrails and that over the entrails. The appendage of the liver with the kidneys he shall remove as well as the fat over them and on the loins. He shall send up in smoke all of them on the altar together with the corresponding grain offering and drink offering. An offering by fire of soothing odor, or odor to Yahuwah. And Lispis, the flesh of soothing odor. It shall be an offering by fire to Yahuwah. Thus they must do to every young bull, to every ram, and to every lamb, and its limbs shall remain apart. The corresponding grain offering and drink offering shall be on it, an eternal rule for your generations before Yahuwah. And after this holocaust, he shall offer the holocaust of the tribe of Yahuda separately, as he has done with the holocaust of the Luiim. So shall he do with the holocaust of the children of Yahuda after the Luiim. And this is the offering of the wood where they bring their wood in and they get an offering just so you're, you know, and then the next day right here is the next set of uh, two tribes right here. On the second day, he shall first offer the Holocaust of Benjamin or Benjamin. And after it, he shall offer the Holocaust of the children of Yahusuf, Ephraim and Manasseh together. On the third day, he shall offer the Holocaust of Reuben separately and the Holocaust of Shimon separately. So if you, oh, I'll just continue. On the fourth day, he shall offer the Holocaust of Yishikar separately and the Holocaust of Zebulun separately. On the fifth day, he shall offer the Holocaust of Gad separately and the Holocaust of Asher separately. And on the sixth Yom or day, he shall offer the Holocaust of Dan separately and the holocaust of Naphtali separately. In the seventh, all right, and that was the end because it breaks off again of what they have here for the wood offering. Usually, I, I do believe in the new translation, it has a little bit more of the text there so you can actually see it. There is some disagreement, however, yeah, because it moves on to the first of the seventh month there. But there is some disagreement with what they say in their commentary and what the text actually says, um, where they have the wood offering starting the day after the new oil offering, and then it would go for six days and end on the Sabbath. But if you look at the text itself, just what it says, and then you look at other texts that go along with it, a great example would be in the Psalms of the Dead Sea Scrolls, there's an account of Dawid or David's Psalms. There's a list of how many he wrote, one for every day of the year and one for every festival. And when you count those out, it only adds up if they go together where the first of new wood and the first of new oil are on the same day, because there's only 30 songs that he made for each of these festivals and it wouldn't fit otherwise. But that's really not a big issue for to be contentious about if someone doesn't quite see it that way however this is the main place where we get that information and then perhaps later on this week we'll go over where it mentions it in the common scriptures so you can see that the new wine new oil and new wood is not a, a new phenomenon at all it's mentioned it's mentioned that it would be given to aaron and it would be a perpetual thing as well it's just not something that we see overly much in scripture but you do see a little bit here and there. All right, so you all have a wonderful Shabbat, and we will see you next week. Shavuot Tov. Bye-bye.